Good day YouTubers, I'm doing another modification to my boat and this one is brought about by necessity. Since COVID-19 started I've done a lot more solo fishing than I used to and I found that I really come to like solo fishing. But that's another story. It's getting on to winter too. My wife usually comes out with me on the boat but she's really not a cold weather girl so she's not that keen on going out in winter. I'm fishing a lot more during the middle of the week, so the boys aren't around to go fishing with me, they're busy working. So I decided I needed an easier way to launch and retrieve the boat than what I had been doing. I was also after something a little bit more in keeping with my age and dignity. So I bought a boat latch and I'm installing that, that will allow me to just drive on and off the trailer. That's a theory anyway, got to install it and try it, but I think it's going to work just fine. Here's a little segment of a typical retrieval. I left the camera run when I came back in onto the trailer. The windscreen's a little bit salt encrusted, but you'll get the general idea. This is my usual procedure for getting the boat on or off. I jump up on the boat, I have the Boat about that far back off the winch, start the engine, drive it forward 12 inches, then crawl down under here, under the mid coder, and I reach down and I unhook it like this. And I crawl back up, run back down, cut the engine back, and reverse off the trailer. Coming back into the ramp, I just reverse the procedure, drive off the trailer, come back here, come back under, hook it on. But this time, when I hook it on, I've actually got to reach down to the winch handle and just wind up the slack. Then I run back and turn the engine off. That is why I bought myself a boat latch. And there it is, that's the launch and retrieve boat latch that I bought. Comes with copious instructions on how to fit it. I hope it's not that difficult that I actually need all them. I guess you'd call this the main latch piece. That's the piece that catches the boat. And this is the piece that goes onto the boat to replace the U-bolt that's already there. And as you can see, these move apart so that you don't have to drill new holes. You can just adjust them to fit the existing holes. All very good. And yeah, more instructions down there. Okay, tell, tell me about how to launch it. There's a, that's a stick-on thing. You can put that on your boat so that you have the launch and retrieve thing all sorted out. Yeah, that's it. I've just got to get and put that on now, which probably won't happen before I get out in the water again. Total lack of time for anything at the moment. But by the time this video goes up, it will be on the boat. All right, first part of the job is to get this U-bolt off and to do that, I've pushed the bait back a bit. I've got a bit of a bodgy rope here to stop it sliding all the way back. I think it's going to be safe. I hope so. Now, I've already been up inside and taken the nuts off. I'll just show you that. Yeah, you can see it down there. That's the U-bolt. There's the nuts and the uh, backing plate that came off of it. Now, it doesn't pull straight out. I guess it's got some sticker flex or something in there to seal it. So I'm going to have to get a hammer onto it to give it a bit of a start. And rather than hit directly on the bolts, put the nuts halfway on or three quarters of the way on and hit on the nuts. That spreads the load out over the thread and hopefully you won't damage the thread that way. And the U-bolt will be usable. Even if you don't need it again, someone else might be able to get some use out of it. And zoom in on that, I hope you can see that. The nuts are on, but just the bolt uh, is not quite through the nuts. So the nuts are going to take the hit from the hammer and spread it out along the thread and hopefully not damage anything and we'll be able to knock this U-bolt out. All right, that's the U-bolt I took off, the outside plate, the inside plate, U-bolt and the two nuts. That's all there is to it. That's it there. It was uh, sealed with what I assume is elastic. But I'm going to use sticker flex when I put this next one on. Now I'm going to have to ease those holes bigger because they're too small, those holes. And try and get it on the same angle. Now, make sure she's going to go in. Oh, yep. Beautiful. Beautiful. That'll go in nicer. That's the 
piece we want on. They come with two pieces. This goes on the inside and it's got all three holes in it. And these are the two outside pieces. You just pick the one with the spacing that you need. They must be pretty standard, I guess. So that will go on all the way down there. I'm going to have to stick this through and just see if I want to cut these bolts off. Oh. oh yes. You see down there, see how far they're sticking out? They don't need to be out nearly that far. I'm going to cut them off a bit. I've cut a piece off these, um, both of these bolts, so that now it won't stick out quite so far into the ankle. Well, still stick out a bit, but that'll be fine. I can get the cut-off wheel in there and trim it up after if I really want to. So as you can see, I hope, uh, let's see if I can zoom in a little bit for you. Okay, as you can see there, there's still ample sticking through, way too much really sticking through, but since it's in the ankle wheel, I don't think it's going to get in the road or anything. I'm just going to leave that stick through. I've prepped that, I've cleaned all the old elastic off. I'm going to get a little bit of mefo and just give it a bit of a wipe off and then I'm going to use some stick flex on it to seal it. Alright, I've got this all ready. Uh, just one thing while I'm here. If you ever take this off, just be aware that it only goes on one way. There's a little bevel inside to make room for these weld beads here. If you put it on the wrong way, it won't go all the way in. So make sure you get that on the right way. Get our outside plate on. Bit of an overkill, I'm going to have to clean up today. I was going to try and film putting some sticker flex around that, uh, but it's not going to happen. I can't get a camera and a sticker flex gun down there, so I'll show it to you afterwards. Well, that turned into a bit of an unholy mess there, but nevertheless, there's plenty of sticker flex on there, it's not going to leak. Well, there's the finished bolts down there. You can see there's plenty of sticker flex around it. No way we're getting any moisture in there. They're sticking out a long way further than they need to, but because they're down the bottom of the anchor well, they're not going to cause any problems down there. I don't think anyone will ever be putting their feet down there to get them cut. So I'm just going to leave them like that. If I do need to cut them off, I can get a cut-off wheel on a small grinder down in there. But for the moment, they can stay as they are. Hey, I'm doing this by myself today, so camera work's going to be a little bit sketchy. It's got to go in that, like that. I'm just eyeballing up the angles and distances and everything, knowing how it has to work. Now that I've had a good look at it, it's not that complicated really. But I've got to go in that back hole of the three. There's a hole down there that I don't have a bolt for, but which will fit in that slot to bolt that end in. And I've got to drill a hole for this front one here. So I've just got to mark it in the right spot. So yeah, anyway, I shall measure it, mark it, drill it, and we'll come back and see how that went. I can't really see what I'm doing with this video camera because of the glare in the viewfinder, but I think I'm showing you the hole that I've drilled at the front. And I've taken the nut off the bolt uh, that's going to go through the middle of the uh, catch. Oh yeah, this bolt is on. I'm missing a bolt to go through this hole here and out this back one here. I've got to go and buy one of them. I think that'll work. The gap there is only one finger width where they say two, but seeing how it works, I think that's going to be all right. I'm going to give it a shot at that anyway, because to change that means some modifications to this hole set up here, and I don't want to do that. So I think I'll get away with this all right. If not, I'll have to figure out something else. But for now, I'm going to go with this, take it down and try launching it and retrieving it. I'll know how it goes before I publish this video, so uh, if it doesn't work, I'll let you know what I have to do to fix it. I'll say I've been pretty lucky in that I haven't had to use any of the spacer blocks or anything else that you have to buy as accessories. Everything's just sort of fitted. The only thing that doesn't work is this lever here hits on the spare tyre and sort of gets stuck there. So I've got to move the spare tyre, that's the easiest answer to that. And it's not a bad thing to do because ever since I got the bait, this is a little bit in the way of the spare tyre. I had to move the spare tyre slightly when I got the trailer to make this work. So I'm going to drop it down a bit further so that it's out of the way of that. There's plenty of ground clearance under it really. 
So I can go down another couple of inches, which is plenty. And oh, 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 I just saw a problem. I can't go down because this plate's in the way. Oh dear, that is a bit of an issue. Okay, well that's in place and I managed to solve this problem by putting a couple of washers in behind here to tip that plate out at an angle. The handle doesn't hit the, doesn't go anywhere near that now. Probably didn't need both washers in there because I've got a good clearance there now. Nevertheless, I've got them there now so they can stay. Then there we are, finishing touch up with the sticker on. Shows you how to launch and retrieve. I don't think I'll need it, but uh, sometimes you're out with someone who's not familiar with your boat. They might back the boat down or back the trailer down to pick it back up. And it's there just to give them a hint on what they need to do. Put the missing bolt there in the middle. I had to put him in upside down and not on the top because of this bar here. I couldn't get it down through the other way without taking the bar out. And I didn't want to do that. So anyway, that's all locked in there, all finished. I had thought I'd get it on the water before the video was uploaded, but that's not going to happen now. I'll have a look at the weather. It's going to be over a week before I get out again between my work roster and the weather. So I'll probably upload the video and then do another short one just showing it in action. Well, that's it for the installation. I know the proof of the pudding is in the launching and retrieval, so I will get a video of that up once I get out on the water to try it. That might be a couple of weeks coming because of work commitments and the weather. But in the meantime, if you like the video, click that like button. And until then, good fishing.